Hi everyone, this is Hardik from Fuzzing.in. Thank you for watching my videos. In today's video, we are going to see a very recent Outlook CV which is called CV 2024-21413. This has been reported by Checkpoint and it has been fixed by Microsoft in the recent MS Patch Tuesday. This is a vulnerability which allows uh, leaking of anti-LM credential or remote code execution. So in this video, we are going to see how can we replicate this vulnerability, how can we set up the environment and uh, other details. So let's start. So as you can see, Checkpoint has published a blog on this vulnerability with their findings and uh, they have given uh, various details of this vulnerability. So we will quickly go through this blog and then we will see how can we set this up uh, the vulnerable environment on our system and how can we replicate this vulnerability. So as you can see that uh, it has something to do with the hyperlink inside Outlook. So when you send an email or when you receive an email with a hyperlink, there are different cases like uh, one of these cases that you can have uh, various URL uh, protocol which are related to particular application. Say uh, if I am sending an email and if it contains my signature where I say call me on Skype. So the URL for that will start with Skype which is a URL handler. So when I click on that particular link, it will open Skype for me. And similarly, what Outlook has uh, done is that it will give a warning. When you click on this uh, URL inside your email, uh, you will get a warning like this that Microsoft Outlook security uh, notice and it will say that this location may be unsafe. So this is a precaution which Microsoft has uh, provided inside Outlook so that it cannot be misused. And then there are different uh, types of uh, protocol like file. So if you have some SMB or HTTP uh, link, uh, suppose if you are storing one file inside an SMB server and if you give that link inside your email, then uh, what will happen is that Outlook will give a uh, message that something unexpected went wrong with this URL. So basically by default, you cannot access the file by clicking inside your email. Outlook will uh, give an error message and it will not allow you to uh, access the remote file. So now here is the interesting thing. It's uh, actually a very simple bug uh, or a very simple bypass which has been discovered. So uh, it has something to do with the moniker. Uh, we will not go into much detail what a uh, moniker is. You can simply uh, go through Microsoft documentation for that. But the bug over here is pretty simple. If you have a URL which is uh, say on, on a, a local network, you have a shared uh, uh, directory and if you copy some uh, file inside that some RTA for Word or anything else and uh, if you send that link as we've seen over here Outlook will not allow you to access that particular URL you will get a error message like uh, this right but if you simply add an explanation mark and uh, followed by if you add some uh, string to that or some uh, word to that then it has been noticed that uh, Outlook allows to access that particular URL so uh, this is a very strange behavior you can see. So, uh, this is what this bug is or this vulnerability is. So if in this URL you can see that there is an IP address which is of a local share and then there is a directory or folder over here and then there is a RTF file. So if you remove this explanation mark something then Outlook will not be able to uh, access that URL. It will not allow you to access that URL but if you add this exclamation mark and then if you add some uh, text over here then uh, interestingly you will notice that outlook can access this uh, or this particular uh, file over the network share the first impact of this bug is that you can easily uh, leak anti-lm credential if there are some attacker and if they sent you an email uh, with a uh, local uh, share or if a network share which is pointing to some remote host and if you click on that link then they can easily steal your network credential and second thing is instead of having this uh, uh, antelum thing if you have a share where you simply put a uh, exploit file like it can be a docx or it can be an rtf and if you uh, simply give that link then there are chances that what outlook will do is that it will launch word on the background and then uh, if there is any vulnerability inside uh, uh, word then that vulnerability can get exploited and it can lead to a remote code execution. So these are the two case scenarios uh, which are present in this blog. Now let us go ahead and see how can we capture the antelum hash using this particular vulnerability.
So to capture the NTLM hash, we will use a tool called Responder, which is by default available on the Kali, and it has uh, a very simple command line. So the command line for this is uh, sudo. You need to run it with sudo, and then Responder followed by dash v, which means verbose mode, and capital I, which uh, is followed by your ethernet adapter so in my case my ethernet adapter is eth0 so i'm using that and when you uh, run this you can uh, actually uh, see output like this and now uh, we need to have this particular email open in the outlook so let me open that email and show you how does it look like so this is a test email which i have uh, actually uh, created for for a, a test account and you can see that this email contains two links the first link will not work and the second link will work. the only difference between first and second link is that the first link does not have the exclamation mark and the second link has exclamation mark followed by some text or the string as mentioned in this vulnerability uh, let me actually open wireshark as well i will capture the traffic so it becomes easy to understand so this is the email and this is uh, Wireshark, which uh, I have set up a filter for SMB v2, and uh, this is uh, the responder running in the Kali Linux. So, this Outlook is installed on a Windows uh, machine, so it communicates to the Kali. So, this IP you see over here 192.168.1.237 is the IP address of my Kali machine. Now, let me go ahead and click on the first link so you can see nothing mm. will happen over here. I can actually see the error, mes error message on the Outlook that something unexpected went wrong. Let me click a couple of times and every time I am seeing this error message on the Outlook. So nothing is happening as you can see it on the Wireshark. Now the interesting thing is that in the second link which is similar to the first link with some added exclamation mark and uh, tags. Let's see what happens. So I have clicked on one time and you can see that Outlook has captured some packet. We also captured the NTLM hash uh, over here. So it means that we are able to bypass this outlook restriction by simply adding exclamation mark and some text uh, in that particular link output of the responder you can see that the client is uh, 192.168.1.52 username is user and uh, the hash is also given over here and we can also see the same thing in the wireshark packet capture so this is how you can uh, capture ntlm hash for this particular vulnerability uh, now in second case what i have done is that i have used a windows machine i have created a network share over here and i have uh, copied a docx file over uh, that particular network share so suppose instead of this simple docx file right now uh, what i have is that it's an empty file there is nothing inside this file simply a test file just imagine that if it contains some exploit over here so what can happen is that when you click on this particular link uh, this particular exploit file can get downloaded and the code can be executed on the back end so uh, let me again capture the traffic and click on the first link so mm. nothing is happening i am seeing the error message on the outlook and when i click on the second uh, link right which is this test.docx followed by exclamation mark and something you can see that mm. uh, the file gets uh, actually uh, downloaded on the system so uh, this is how this vulnerability work and uh, one more thing we can do is that we can do a little bit of debugging so let us uh, use windbg and see what actually uh, happens behind the scene so i open windbg preview and let me attach to outlook.exe and uh, let's see what happens so uh, let's set up a breakpoint on the function given over here so this is for OLE 32 uh, mk parse display name uh, let us set up breakpoint. Let's continue. So, basically, what we are trying to see over here is that when we click on this link, what will happen? So, if I click on first link, nothing is happening, right? Uh, WinDBG is not uh, uh, breaking on this particular uh, breakpoint which we have set. But when I click on the second link over here, you can see that the breakpoint has been hit, and. Uh, uh, this breakpoint is uh, inside OLE32.dll uh, file and this function name is mk pass display name. So if we actually see the documentation of this particular function over here, uh, we can see that this function actually converts a string into a moniker that identify the object named by the string. We have given a URL and then uh, it treats it as a uh, moniker and 
the function takes two parameter one is the interface and the second is the username documentation also says that uh, this function actually parses a human readable name uh, into a moniker so uh, in our case if you recall we have a uh, link followed by expression mark so this is called a composite moniker you need to read more about uh, uh, moniker so in our case it is actually a uh, composite moniker because it contains two things first is the part before exclamation mark which is the network url and the second is the part after exclamation mark which is some uh, random thing something or which uh, we have added over here so uh, this is how it works and uh, you can actually go down you can uh, even debug this particular function what it does you can see the parameter actually and uh, if we see the register over here we can see that uh, rcx rsi rdi so let us see what rcx contains uh, if it contains anything interesting over here nothing useful if we see rdi okay so you can see that rdi contains the link uh, which uh, we have given in the outlook email right this is the link which uh, we clicked so it contains same thing taste.docx uh, exclamation mark something and then all the all the parsing will happen inside this uh, particular function you can even see uh, the call stack over here how uh, it gets uh, executed so uh, if you want you can do further analysis but we will not go into more details after this but there are certain interesting uh, cases which you can explore and uh, a few of them uh, i found is that like there are something called scriptlet which you can use and there are different types of uh, scriptlets running like some commands uh, like you can run powershell or you can even run calc.exe uh, you can even download or execute something so uh, i have not spent much time on debugging this or checking if it works or not but this might be one of the uh, uh, option or one of the a way if you want to go ahead and dig more into this particular vulnerability you can spend your time on that and i also see that there are couple of pocs which are now available on github one of them uh, is uh, uh, this particular url that is uh, du by dash 31 and uh, for this particular cv so it is a actually a shell script and it is using impacket so uh, i try to make it simple and uh, this is how this uh, particular vulnerability uh, works so i hope that you have liked this particular video you have learned something from this video feel free to subscribe like and share my channel that will motivate me to create more such videos till the next video stay safe enjoy bye thank you